Uh, after weeks of speculation, independent presidential hopeful Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in Oakland today announcing his running mate, wealthy 38-year-old attorney and philanthropist Nicole Shanahan. With more on today's big announcement, we are joined by Politico White House and Washington reporter Daniel Littman with us for the first time. Welcome, Daniel. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, so the number one thing that most people will probably react when they hear the name Nicole Shanahan is, who? <laughs> so, <laughs> for most viewers that are wondering, who is Nicole Shanahan when we had all this talk about Aaron Rodgers and other people, who is she? Yeah, we all had to do our research on her in the last couple of weeks uh, as uh, her name got leaked. Uh, so she is lives in the Bay Area, uh, is a lawyer, is a philanthropist, uh, and also has critically a lot of money because she used to be married to Sergey Brin uh, until about a year ago, and he is the co-founder of Google. Uh, and so I'm sure in that divorce, she uh, made a lot of money, uh, you know, got access to a, a bunch of money, and she actually paid for that Super Bowl ad uh, that a Super PAC for RFK Jr. Uh, put uh, on air a few months ago that the whole Kennedy family distanced themselves from because uh, they are totally against what RFK is doing now. And so one of the biggest challenges for RFK and now his new running mate, Nicole Shanahan, is getting on the ballot right now when you're not running with a party. Um, and how helpful is Nicole Shanahan's money with that? It's going to be very helpful because... It's a lot of people you have to hire and pay to gather signatures, and every state has a, a different amount of required signatures, and you have to often get double the, the signatures that uh, you need, need legally because a lot of them get uh, tossed out uh, during the process of verifying all these signatures. Um, and, you know, he had to kind of announce his VP choice early because a lot of states uh, require uh, a VP choice when they when you're applying to be on the ballot, uh, but uh, it, a lot of the parties are looking to see who who wins and loses from this announcement and his, the continuation of his campaign. Well, and the interesting thing is that RFK Jr. has been appealing to a lot of Trump folks and a lot of conservatives with his message, but she was a really liberal Democrat, meaning she supported Marianne Williamson. She did fundraisers for George Gascon here in L.A. She said in this video that in 2020, when her daughter was diagnosed with autism, it made her rethink things politically, and she found RFK. But what are the, like, sort of policy main message of Kennedy Shanahan? So uh, a big uh, portion of that message is vaccine skepticism, if not outright denial, for RFK Jr. Uh, and Shanahan is kind of uh, heading to that position since she has said we need to have a debate on that. Um, and she has also talked about having pesticide-free food, uh, which we can all uh, pretty much agree on. Uh, but we also have an industrial agriculture system, which makes that uh, hard to achieve. Uh, and skepticism of corporate power uh, and kind of revitalizing the environment. And so you have a bunch of issues that appeal to liberals, but also some that are uh, uh, for conservatives. Uh, there's a lot of populist conservatives out there. Uh, and so they're seeing whether which, which side uh, uh, responds to that ticket more. And it's right now it's a toss up, but more Republicans are uh, eyeing RFK Jr. right now. Although it seemed like looking at some of the reaction from conservatives that they were disappointed to have somebody who had that liberal background uh, come out there. So real quickly, you're in Washington. How is the Biden camp, the Trump camp uh, reacting to this? So the Biden campaign uh, has stood up, uh, you know, people and teams at the DNC to go after third parties. So they are not uh, happy with this. Uh, they looked at what happened in 2000 and 2016, where Ralph Nader and Jill Stein cost Democrats those elections. And the Trump campaign is also uh, concerned as well, because they could take away some of those conservative voters that don't want to vote for Trump, but also want to voice disapproval of Biden. Yeah, it'll be really interesting how this all plays out, but I don't think he's gotten enough attention from the mainstream media based off of what kind of impact he can have on this election. Uh, Daniel Lippman from Politico, thank you so much for your insight. Really appreciate it. Thank you.